so this is a new topic uh, data science with r so we are now at unit 2 where we will be talking about the r programming so r we are going to say it will be a open source uh, software and yes uh, if we want to do something in r the basic intention was uh, we need to uh, look with an aspect that uh, r should be taken up with uh, r language and r studio so this is the four most intention what we need to understand at this case so data science with r so here the two important buzzwords will be r and r studio so r and r studio fine we will go with this and there are some online compilers where we can take up the r language so those they will be uh, repel or uh, my computer or one computer so online gdb so these are several online compilers where we can uh, work with the r language r language primitives etc so coming to the uh, introductory part of r overview we are going to call r it is going to be a programming language and mostly it is going to do uh, statistical analysis so most intention was we need to work with the statistical analysis we need to work with the graphic representation and we need to work with the uh, reporting tools etc so the next important appearance was or it was at 1993 developed by uh, new zealand professors uh, university of auckland by mr ross and mr robert so these were the inventors for uh, r and yeah r it is going to support both the uh, modular programming and it is going to support the procedural programming and the object oriented programming so all these elements they are fabricated as part of the r language and again r it is going to be a open source language so at any time we can download it we can use the functionalities we can include the packages whatever a uh, need and then we can start our uh, analysis at that part so the most important thing was it is a programming language where we can do conditions where we can do loops where we can go with the uh, uh, recursive functions and uh, uh, input output facilities etc so these are some of the features and r it is going to store uh, data handling and it is going to provide storage facilities there are data structures advanced data structures for r we call it as arrays lists vectors and matrix arrays lists vectors and matrix and they are going to do some data analysis at that part so this is foremost interesting part so the interesting part what we were talking was it we were uh, uh, telling that it is going to uh, support the uh, large databases and those large databases it is going to come out with advanced data structures so in c or c++ or java we don't have advanced data structures like arrays lists vectors etc but in our language we are going to have those advanced content so now coming to the uh, things uh, what will be the most important features for r so this we are going to call it as a open source and then mostly it is going to be funded by microsoft and ibm so this is the take away here so industry giants like microsoft people industry giants like ibm people they are going to uh, fund out this uh, r language and r it is going to support both graphics it is going to support uh, um, statistical computation thereby it is going to support object oriented when we are going to call it as an object oriented we can assume that it is supporting uh, classes it supports objects inheritance polymorphism so all such type of object oriented features they are going to be part of this r and next one it is uh, open source language and it can be freely available and what things we can do up with our language the things we can say it is with data mining it is with uh, 
statistical analysis both of the things we can do and then we can embed time series analysis we can go with linear regression we can go with non linear regression models so all those can be part of the r language the next thing was we have community packages so what is community here means uh, as r is going to be a open source content anybody can uh, add a package can contribute a package and that package we can come use that package in our program etc so that is the reason why we are going to call r language as a open source content and next one what we are going to say was uh, yeah it can be downloaded from the website called as r hyphen project dot org and it can configure to either a 62 bit or a 32 bit uh, uh, windows etc the next intention was there are some primitives what we need to understand here what will be the advantages of r studio so earlier just i was mentioning we were using this as a r programming but r programming interface it need to be added to r studio the reason was we have a good look and feel good graphic environment so this will be some of the advantages of the r studio so r we are going to say it is an integrated development environment where we can have a good user interface so for that only we are going to use r studio so uh, the next thing it is going to have a portability when we are going to call it as a portability that means it can work on any type of operating system so when we call it as a data science as a definition one it is having big data two it is going to have data mining three it is going to have machine learning algorithms so the most important component we are going to call it as big data so how we can solve problems with big data means we can use hadoop architecture we will use map reduce methods so those hadoop pig hive all those contents can be brought to the r studio so that was one of a excellent feature which r is going to provide so these are some of the advantages where we can have an excellent graphics option where we can draw pie charts bar charts so lot of fabrications can be done do words of data visualization so the next important thing was uh, you can see in this graph a study was telling what are the popular programming languages so it was python rapid miner and r so in order to do analytics in order to do data analytics we can go with the r so that is the importance so it is in third position similarly how much is the market share of r again we are going to calculate so market share of r it is uh, roughly internet problem i think yes sir yeah can we go ahead yes can sir can we go ahead yeah yeah fine yes. thank you so now coming to the uh, beginning basics of the r language so let us look into beginning and basics of r language at this case one how is the prompt of r language so the prompt of r language it is going to mention with dollar symbol this is first important thing next one uh, my string is going to be a variable name and to this variable name we are going to put a character data that is what we are going to call it as hello world so hello world is a character data and what we have done was we made less than and then we put a hyphen so this is what we are going to call it as a assignment we will be calling this element as assignment or the equivalent we are going to call it as equal to operation 
one we are going to call it as an assignment or we are going to call this one as a equivalent operation next one we have seen c out we have scan of print f in our earlier programming languages similarly we are going to use this word called as print similarly we are going to use this word called as print so that it is going to make a print of the line so we taken a variable and we are just printing it so as simple as such element next one how we are going to write comments for r so in c language we have in this model so for the c language we are have using um, this model or we will uh, enclose this element with this model beginning and ending so but in r language we will use only the hash in r language we will use only the hash so that will be the advantage of using the contents so my string we are going to have this uh, hello world so this is the very first program and how we can save this to a file we can save this to a file and i'm going to call first uh, i'm going to call this file with the test dot r so dot r we are going to call it as an extension dot r we are going to call this one as an extension so um, in dot c dot cpp dot java dot py so how we are going to have the extensions similarly r will save the files with dot r so this is the take away from the slide now how are the data types how are the data types recognized in r so all the data types in r they are recognized as objects they are going to be recognized as objects so it can be character object it can be float object it can be double or it can be double sorry it can be boolean so any type of content can be treated as an r object so this is the advantage uh, so that it can be recycled if the object was not in use so the content can be recycled there itself so that will be the advantage of why we are going to use the content as a r object so next one operating system it is going to allocate the memory it is going to maintain the storage space it is going to make a reservation of a storage space etc so that will be the advantage of using the data types at this content so next one was what are the different data types which are going to be available in our objects so this is the key takeaway what we need to understand one we are going to call it as vectors two we call it as lists three we call it as matrix four we are going to call it as array fifth one we call it as frames and sixth one we are going to call it as factors so vectors lists matrix arrays factors and data frames so these are the most prominent elements for the or object so now let us look one by one how they are going to work so now let us see the very first data type uh, uh, we call here as a vectors so here i was talking about the first element called as vectors here so now how vectors are going to be presented as part of this r so first of all we can say logic value so i am going to say true i am going to call here as a true and true i am going to initialize to v that is called as a variable name v is going to be called as a variable name so to the variable name we are going to put this word here so what is print class means so what type of class it is going to give up so it is going to produce true or false so true or false we are going to call that element as a logic so it is assumed as a boolean it is going to assumed as a boolean variable so this will be the advantage of using the logical next time numeric so let us see i just want to have 13.5 
I have five, I have triple nine. I just want to print those elements. So how can I do it? I'm going to say 23.5. It is going to have um, assigned to a variable called as V. Then we are going to say print class of V. So what type of object it is? I just want to identify. So 23, 5, 9, 9, 9, these elements are going to be numeric values. Since they are going to deal with numeric values, therefore, we are going to assume that as a numeric. Now, there is a case here. Numeric, it can go with either one uh, real values or it can go with integer values. It can go with real values or it can go with integer values so both of them are possible for numeric content next one i just want only the integer value if such is a condition is going to happen then we need to mention it as l of the number after the number if we are going to mention l at that case then it will be treated purely as integer so this is the advantage of using uh, integer value. OK, fine. So now how can I put string values? How can I put character values? At this case, we need to understand. So here I can say single character A. Here I can have double quotes with good. Next, I'm going to have uh, true with double quotes. And see, 23.4 is put in single characters, single quotes. So if I am going to put 23.4 in quotes, by default, it will be treated as a character object. By default, it will be treated as character object. So this was the takeaway what we need to understand here. So I'm going to print this character here. So when I take up this character here, it can be a single element. It can be a multiple element. It can be single quotes. It can be double quotes. And then finally, it can be a number. But that number should be between single or double quotes then it is going to treat that element as a character value. So let us start the very first definition. What was a vector here? So when we say it is a scalar, when we are going to say it is a vector, it contains more than one element and all these elements, they are going to combine to a specific purpose. It not only have a single element, but all will have it can store more than one element multiple elements but all of them they are going to bring up to a single item so let us see what i was meaning red green and yellow we do have red we do have green we do have yellow and all of them are assigned to a variable name called as an apple now if i'm going to say print apple obviously it displays red green and blue and why it is going to do like this means we have put those elements in the character. Next one. What is the data type? What is the class object of Apple? If we need to look into it, then what we are going to say, we are going to say print Apple. Obviously, it prints to watch the class it is going to belong. We just mentioned earlier that it belongs to the character data type. So that is the reason why it is going to bring up those elements next one the second data type the second data type what we are going to mention was lists we are going to mention it as lists so in this lists it can contain different types of elements it can contain different types of elements but here what we can say that it is going to use only single type of elements and it is going to use C. C we are going to call it as combine or we are going to call it as concat. So it is going to unify the elements. So for that we are going to use a function called as C. So why we are going to use this C because we need to combine the elements in a vector. We need to combine the elements in the other primitive data types. So for that, we are going to use C open brackets or C close brackets. That is what we are going to.
the C it is going to be with uh, 2 5 and 3 we call it as vector here then it is going to have 21.5 then it is going to have sign so list it can have many different types of elements inside it what are the different types of elements one it is going to be 2 5 3 they are concatenated with a vector two it is going to have a univariable called as 21.3 3 it is going to have a sign function so in this way three primitive different elements are going to be participated as part of a list so what i am going to do i am going to create a variable called as list1 then i am going to use the data type called as list in this list i have three elements one vector two numeric three sign function now if i am going to say print list1 what it is going to have means first element it is going to display 253 second element it is going to put 21.3 and third element it is going to bring up the sign function so first position second position and third position so in first position you can say there are double quotes in second position uh, you you can see uh, the first element inside it that is with the list uh, after the list that is 21.3 and followed by the sign function. So this is the difference what we need to understand. Next comes the third data type. So what was the third data type means uh, the third data type we are going to call here as a matrix. So matrix we are going to say it is a two dimensional rectangular database. So as how we are going to work with linear algebra functions there how we are going to build up the matrix the same elements has to be seen up for the statistical and mathematical applications. So for that we are going to bring up the matrix data type at this point of time. So M we are going to call it as a variable name and to this variable we are going to give up the uh, data structure so what was the data structure we are going to call here as matrix in this matrix i am going to have first element second element third element fourth element fifth element and sixth element so how i have to divide these six elements i need to divide these six elements with the number of rows two and number of columns should be three so i need two rows and i need three columns so i am going to call it as 2 by 3 I'm going to call here as 2 by 3 elements so I can say this is row 1 row 2 so row 1 and row 2 then I'm going to have column 1 column 2 and column 3 so column 3 column 2 and column 1 so why I'm going to get this answer in this way because I have given a system the inputs the total number of rows should be Two, the total number of columns should be three. So that is the reason why matrix was uh, taken up in this form and by row is equals to true. So what is the significance here by row is equals to true means the partitioning of the elements, the partitioning of the elements will be first given preference to row, then it will be moved to the next row. So first element is A, next element is A, next element is b so first row three elements are completed then it goes Fine. After matrix, we have another element called as arrays. After matrix, we are going to have an another element called as arrays. So when we are going to call it as an matrix, it need not be confined to two elements. When we are going to call it as an array, it need not be confined to two elements. It can have multiple dimensions it can bring up any number of dimensions so this is the most important thing what we need to observe 
in matrix we are going to say it is confined Concept called here as an array. So how we are going to define the array means? So to define the array, we are going to say array item, and then we are going to say uh, concatenate with green and yellow. We are going to have concatenate or combine with green and yellow. So it should be taken up three by three times one. Row two column three by rows. Then how many times of it should occur? It should occur. It should occur two times. So how many times it repeats? It should repeat for one time. It should repeat for second time. So the occurrence should be for two times. So that is the reason why we mentioned three. Three and two, so three, three and two. So that is the why we are going to bring up. So we can say three rows, three columns, and Sir, you are not audible, sir. The another important element here was factors. So when we are going to call here as a factors, factors it is going to print number of levels. mostly it is going to store uh, the elements with numeric character or boolean so uh, second thing it is going to eliminate the duplicate values etc for example i can tell that in the college there are five professors there are 10 associate professors there are 20 assistant professors so in a college and there are five professors 10 assistant prof, uh, associate professors and 20 associate professors if such is a case now name professor name associate professor name assistant professor in this way there are repetition of around 30 around 30 elements so how can i minimize that what are the duplicate values in it how can i have a unique values in it so if there is a looking up an item for uniqueness there are only three classes one professor two assistant professor and three associate professors so putting professor associate professor and assistant professor into items we are going to call that elements as levels we are going to call that elements as levels so this is what we need to understand here so here i can say i have a variable called as apple underscore color then i'm saying green green yellow red 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 and green so different elements are concatenated and put to a variable here now what i am going to do is i am going to apply a function called as factor now i am going to apply a function called as a factor and then in this factor it eliminates the duplicates it is going to eliminate the duplicates two greens it will consider one green yellow one time red 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 three times but still it is going to take up only one occurrence again green three time it came so now green yellow red so we are going to say there are the number of factors number of levels it is going to print as only three so you can see here red green and yellow so it is going to bring up number of distinct values in order to identify the unique elements in order to identify the unique elements in order to identify the distinct levels we will be using the factors content and 
the next important primitive data structure in our language we are going to call it as data frames so when we are going to call it as a data frames it can mingle up with all the earlier data structures what we learned today that is vectors second one lists third thing we call it as arrays fourth one we call it as matrix then we call it as frames uh, then we call it as factors and finally now we came to the next data type called as a frames so in this frame what we are going to do is we are going to take three vectors gender height and weight and age we are going to take four vectors so how why i am going to call it as vectors because i am going to use this concatenate symbol i am going to use the combined symbol here and you can see 42 36 26 26 one category male male female belonging to the character category 152 174.5 165 coming to the numeric category so you can say these all belongs to the character class these all belongs to the numeric class so in this way we are going to engender the content here and how we are going to do is i am going to say a primitive word a data type data dot frame i am going to use this word data dot frame assign it to a variable called as body mass index and then i am going to print the body mass index so what i can show here was gender will occur at one row 152 will be assigned to height 81 will be assigned to age 42 will be assigned to age next the last primitive you can see female assigned to height next one 165 assigned to height what 78 assigned to weight and 26 assigned to age in this way we have a unified content by vectors so this is the advantage of pulling up all the things putting together in form of rows and columns so it is bringing up a nomenclature towards table so we have rows and we have columns as we mentioned in relational database management system so when we start up queries when we do analysis the things has to be brought into structured way into a structured format so bringing that elements to a structured format we will be using the elements called as a frames so just let us have a very quick recap of what we discussed today so we talked about the very first type of data structure called as a vectors so in vector we will be using a concatenate symbol or a combined symbol and all the elements they should belong to the same data type next one the we call here as a list in list it is going to show heterogeneous contents that is it can have character it can have integer it can have numeric any type of data structure can be put together similarly a list can have a vector in itself that is advantage third thing we can put the data in rows and columns that is by number of rows and by number of columns into two dimensional approach we will be calling that elements as matrix elements next one we do have a matrix drawback it will occur only one time but we want the elements to be in multi dimensional way at that time matrix is going to fail for that we are going to bring the new data structure called as an arrays so in this array how many times occurrence the same matrix can be repeated more than once so that we are going to fill it up with the data structure called as an arrays and finally we need to have distinct elements we need to find unique elements in the given list i have green green yellow red red green so how many number of greens are there how many number of yellows are there how many number of reds are there so we need to put those category itself instead of repeating those values we call that as a factor data type and finally for any data analytics we need to get the data into structured format in rows and columns to set up the uh, data analysis part with queries etc in form of rdbms for that we are going to bring the concept of 
data frames. So data frames can fit with any type of data structure. It can be lists, it can be vectors, it can be matrix, it can be arrays, it can be levels. So all this can be brought to a frames here. So the syntax for a frame, we are going to say it is dot frame and we get this content and it is representing the things in rows and columns. So this is what the advantage of frames. Okay, so this is the learning for today. This is the learning for today. So we will uh, stop our class at this point of time. So any thing to discuss? So.